What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to dive into something I don't normally get to talk about a whole lot. And that is big block Fords. So my buddy Jason Black picked up these uh, cylinder heads in a trade deal. And while everyone out there would love to have a set of John Cossey cylinder heads, the budget don't always allow for that. Let's just be honest. Those cylinder heads are excellent. They deliver power and torque. But that's not to say that something that you can't find at a swap meet or get in a good trade deal can't be good. So what am I going to do in this video that's different than other videos in the past? Well, as you know, I've been a student of David Vizard for nearly 20 years now. I know it's hard to believe. But, and I also understand that 99% of you guys and gals out there do not have a flow bench. So what we're going to do is dive into the simple mods of head porting things that can get you great results without having to have a flow bench if you follow David's five golden rules of head porting. So what we're looking at here is a set of older Edelbrock Victor Jr. Big Block Ford 385 series cylinder heads. And yes, they look kind of ratty right now. But the question is, what can we do to improve these cylinder heads without, one, breaking the budget, and two, without having a hundred hours worth of time invested in them? Um, just a quick glance, you see really big port volume. I haven't poured this cylinder head yet. And for those who's wanting to know, I think you can see that Victor Jr. 61, 66. And, um, typical valve sizes, two 119 intake valves, nothing, nothing extravagant, but... As cast in my little bit of research that I have done on these cylinder heads uh, is the fact that they flow close to 330 CFM now like I said I understand that you may not have a flow bench but the mods that we're going to dive into on these cylinder heads are going to be very basic basically what I would call a good bowl cleanup and actually a lot of the porting is not in the port itself it's going to be here in the chambers, deshrouding and using David's techniques. So before I dive into more about the big block Ford Victor Jr. cylinder head, I have an opportunity that doesn't creep up that often. We have here a big block Chevy cylinder head beside the 385 series big block Ford head. A lot of people out there in the community think that the big block Ford head is nothing more than a copy of the big block Chevy cylinder head. While they're both canted valve heads, there's a lot of differences. And so before I get into all of the things that we're going to do to this, I want to talk about these similarities and differences because I do think it's important for you to understand the difference between a big block Chevy cylinder head and a big block Ford. Not that it's going to matter in the real world, but it's just some of that useless information that you might be able to use down the road. So our comparison head is actually an AFR, I think it's a 355 or 315 enforcer head. Let me look and see. I can't Anyway, it's big rectangle port. So one of the major differences between, well, let's talk about the big block Chevy first. The big block Chevy, the, most of the aftermarket cylinder heads out there have a 24 valve degree angle, which is referring to the intake valve. One of the things that is a hindrance to the big block and you cannot get around it is the fact you have a good port and a bad port. The good port being the long one right here, you can see because they're Siamese, 
at the face. So you have this long port coming down and then you have this short port that goes up and turns coming into the chamber right there. So typically there's about a 15 to 20 CFM difference depending on the cylinder head but you will always have good and bad flow numbers with a big block Chevy in this type form with Siamese ports. So now that you know about the good port, bad port relationship on the big block Chevy, what about the Ford? Well, from brief observation here of the angle in which the port comes in and the valve is actually angled, you have eight bad intake ports on a big block Ford because it is pretty similar to this one right here. Does that mean this is a bad design? No, not necessarily. But as I was saying, this has a 24 degree valve angle, whereas the OE heads were 26 degree, I believe. And this is where things get interesting. And you can see just how deep the combustion chamber here actually is. And that is a byproduct of that valve angle. Moving over to the big block Ford, you can see that we have a 15 degree valve angle. Why is that such an important issue? Well, the depth of the chamber is much shallower, meaning with a big block Ford, you typically have much combustion chambers, which means to get good compression numbers, you do not have to run the massive dome that you do on the typical big block Chevy setup. So that is a win for the Ford. Okay, now that I actually have it in the porting bench itself, DV and I took a quick look at the bowls here, and honestly, there isn't much to do there. Uh, I don't know if you can see it good, but one thing is notable is from as cast from Edelbrock, the bias is on the wrong side of the valve, meaning that there is more room on this side of the guide versus this side of the guide to the wall. Why that is important is you have to remember that air is very lazy and it's heavy. So air is going to be coming in at this angle and we're going to try to make as much room as we possibly can on that side of the bowl itself so that when the air comes in it can make the turn and go into the combustion chamber as the valve opens why they did it this way i really don't know but hey it is what it is so other than that cleaning that up opening that side up of right there of the bowl uh putting a little bit longer radius on the short side of the exhaust most of the work is going to be chamber work itself and how this is shrouded through here and bringing this out so that we can actually get the air flowing now why is that important david and myself believe that the sooner you get the column of air moving once the intake valve leaves its seat the better chance you have of properly filling the cylinder with air. Now, if a lot of people don't care about low lift flow numbers, the problem with that is whatever you gain at the top end of the flow curve, you will never be able to overcome what you lost in the beginning half of the cycle, if that makes sense. So the goal here is once that valve comes off the seat, is to move as much air as you possibly can as quickly as you can and come in here and have room for it to go and if you want to learn more about that you really need to have this book okay because all of the details are laid out in this book from david straight from amazon.com yeah. just put my name in these aren't my glasses by the way they're the wife's i couldn't find mine just put my name in and you'll come up with all the books that I've written, or nearly all of them. But 
the five golden rules are what we're going to apply. Yes. They're actually and, in here. And what we've got here is something which is has got a big shrouding problem, right? Valve shrouding. Mm -hmm. And this explains how valve shrouding can destroy the flow even if you do all the port work, right? It's it's a restriction that has to be removed, right? So it, uh, you're going to show them the ball method, are you? That's right. Right. Well, okay. And all the figures are in here. So as well. Really good stuff. I'm looking forward to doing this. Um, this is going to be quite different from the normal Unity Motorsports Garage uh, videos, but. Hopefully you will get something from it. So I hope you follow along on this video series. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it because there's a lot of information that I don't want to lose and not put it in the video. So it will probably be brought out over a couple different sections. I've even thought about trying to do it as a live stream as I'm doing it. And that way, if people have questions, I can try to answer them. Don't know how that would work out, but definitely a possibility. Let me know in the comments if you want to see me port these cylinder heads live or just in video form or whatever the case is. But either way, until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I will catch you later.